Potato Talk by Ennis Reese. Pictures by Stanley Mack. Potato Talk. Potato Talk. A man went out in his garden one day to dig some potatoes and sell them for pay. As he started to dig, one of them said, Well, who in the world got you out of bed? For all this time you've let the weeds grow. Now here you come with your shovel and hoe. No thanks to you that at last I'm grown. Go away and leave me alone. The man turned around and looked at his cow. Don't tell me, he said, that you're talking now. The cow would not even shake her head, but the man's little dog spoke up and said, It wasn't the cow who said go away. The potato said it, and meant it, I'd say. Excuse me, I have to get back to my bone, but remember, leave that potato alone. Now the man was amazed, and angry too. He said, Dog, you can't talk. What's the matter with you? Just as soon as I cut a branch from this tree, I'll whip you good. You wait and see. He cut the branch, his face a big frown. Then the tree said, Man, you put that branch down. This scared him so bad he had nothing to say, and he started to throw the branch away. But the branch said, Put me down softly, man, which he did on a stone, and then he ran, for the stone said, Take that thing off me, please. Branches belong only on trees. The farmer, running and out of control, met a man who carried a long fishing pole. Hey, said the fisherman, what's the rush? Did you see a bear back there in the brush? Said the farmer, I heard my potato say, leave me alone, go away. And my dog stopped chewing on his bone and said, you leave that potato alone. Then I did what most any man would and cut a branch to whip the dog good. But the tree said, man, you put that branch down. And the branch said, softly, and then the stone said, Take that thing off me, if you please. Branches belong only on trees. Oh, is that it? the fisherman said. No reason to go and lose your head. Then his fishing pole said, in a curious tone, Well, did he take the branch off the stone? Wah! the fisherman yelled, and then he threw the pole down, and both of the men took off down the road as fast as they could till they met a man with a bundle of wood. Hey, said the woodman, what's the hurry? There's plenty of time and no need to worry. Said the farmer, I heard my potato say, leave me alone, go away. And my dog stopped chewing on his bone and said, you leave that potato alone. Then I did what most any man would and cut a branch to whip the dog good. But the tree said, man, you put that branch down. And the branch said, softly, And then the stone said, Take that thing off me, if you please. Branches belong only on trees. Then the panting fisherman said with a cough, And my fishing pole asked, Did he take it off? Oh, poo, said the woodman, Without a doubt, that's nothing at all to get frightened about. If it happened to you, said his bundle of wood, I'll bet you'd run as hard as you could. Wah, wah, the big woodman yelled, and then he threw the wood down, and all three of the men took off down the road, running, running, till they came to a lake where a bather was sunning. Hey, he shouted, what's there to fear? Surely you can't be chasing a deer. Said the farmer, I heard my potato say, leave me alone, go away. And my dog stopped chewing on his bone and said, you leave that potato alone. Then I did what most any man would, and cut a branch to whip the dog good, but the tree said, Man, you put that branch down. And the branch said, Softly. And then the stone said, Take that thing off me, if you please. Then the puffing fisherman said with a wheeze, And my pole asked, Did he? Said the woodman, It's true. And my bundle of wood said, You would run too. So what? said the bather. Don't run, be men. "'Well, wouldn't you run?' said the lake he'd been in. "'Wah! Wah!' he screamed. And now there were four who ran into town to the mayor's door. The mayor came out and sat down in his chair to hear all about their awful big scare. So the farmer told him word for word just exactly what had occurred. And the fisherman, woodman, and bather, too, told their stories 
and swore they were true. The mayor tried hard not to call them all silly, but at last he scowled and said, Now, really, what a wild story. You'd better calm down and stop disturbing the peace of this town. Now go on back to what you were doing and stop all this running and shouting and stewing. As the men left the mayor, he frowned a big frown. It's nonsense like this that upsets a town, he mumbled. Fantastic, isn't it? said his chair. Imagine, a talking potato. I'll swear. And that's the end of Potato Talk. <laughs>